Good. Okay, joining us in the interview room on the podium, we have Long Beach State with head coach Alan Knipe, senior middle blocker Nick Amato, and sophomore outside hitter Ethan Siegfried. We're going to go ahead and take a couple of uh, brief comments from, <clears throat> from Coach Knipe. We'll open it up to questions from the student athletes. When that is done, they can go back to the locker room and then we will continue with uh, questions for Coach Knight. Coach Knight, why don't you go ahead and take it away? Yeah, well, um, we're, uh, we're excited to advance. Um, that's Santa Barbara is, it, it had a battle last night in five and got a chance to play in the building and came out playing like that. Um, incredibly well-coached team that had, you know, di was just a, a real difficult team to play against most of the season. So. A lot of credit to uh, everything they're doing up there. Uh, as far as the match goes, you know, I thought we played a really nice first set, and uh, I just thought we weren't great on either side of the serving and passing game in the second set, and kind of uh, lost a little focus. Um, but after the after the 10 minute break, I thought our guys did a really really good job of dialing it in on both sides of the ball and being real efficient. So we're like I said, I'm really excited. To, to advance and get a chance to, to play for a title here um, against a great team, whoever comes out of that semifinal. Okay, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions for the student athletes. Gentlemen, great match tonight. What kind of led to the success of overall after the uh, second set? Uh, we just decided that we were gonna switch our mindset. Um, we were getting caught up in the last play a lot. And uh, after we went into the locker room, we talked about it, talked about how we just needed to go out there and execute. And every time we did execute, we were going we were gonna to celebrate every point. Um, after doing that, we, you know, we started to free ourselves up. We got loose, and then we just stuck to our game. And we just kept rolling after that. You know, we believed in each other and just went back there, hit our serves, blocked some balls, killed some balls, and just played Long Beach State Volleyball. Um, Aloha, Ethan. Welcome home. Um, just some thoughts. I mean, you see um, Insing in practice every day. Um, so having a night like that is no surprise for you. But what makes him so good? Uh, Kyle Insing is just such a big ball hitter. And um, all season, I've been lucky enough to be able to train on the other side of the net against him. So I feel it's made me better and pretty prepped. Um, on the net, especially having him run our blocking schemes and with Coach Alan Knight teaching us good um, discipline on blocking. Um, but yeah, having a leader like Kyle, it's it's big for us in all areas of the game, really. Really lucky to be young and have a senior like him leading. Nick, it seems like defense played a big part tonight. Did you kind of get the same feeling? Yeah, defense plays a big part every night, um, the way we play volleyball. Uh, it's one of the things that we take a lot of pride in. Uh, we spend a lot of time working on blocking, working on digging, um, working on just straight up having effort plays. So the great thing about defense is, yeah, offensively, when you get a big bounce or a big kill, it's, it's sweet. It brings a lot of energy. But there's nothing like watching your teammates go through, you know, one of those little bleacher things to just to get, get a ball up, you know, it shows a lot. And so it's, it's a big part of our game and it's something we train hard to do. So it, yeah, yeah I, I felt like it was. Guys, it felt like from the very beginning, maybe the crowd wasn't on your side for obvious reasons maybe. What did you take from that of having a crowd in the atmosphere tonight and playing in that tournament setting? Uh, we know that we're traveling away from Long Beach, not in the pyramid, and we know that we're not going to have as big of a crowd. So one thing we like to emphasize in our team is to keep the energy within us. We don't always have to rely on a crowd, um, and we always have each other's backs. So we're building our energy through the guys on the court and through our bench. Our bench is a huge part of our success always. They're there to back us up whenever we stack points, and when we're not stacking points and they bring us back, try to get our focus and so our team energy is something that we always try to work on every game. 
Coach, when opposing teams come in here, especially ones that are going head to head with UH a lot, the crowd gets on them a little bit. But it seems like the crowd was really rooting for you guys in Hawaii to meet in the finals. It seemed like they they were, they really wanted you there. Did you sense that at all? Or? Um, I, I have no idea. I, I would imagine so. I uh, but I, I to be honest with you, in the middle of the game, I have no idea what's going on. I mean. <laughs> I would imagine that's what they want to have happen. Um, that's there's been a lot of noise outside the control of Hawaii's team and our team for that to happen. So it doesn't surprise me that the fans would like to see that. Um, but I, I honestly had no feel for it during the match whatsoever. Um, I just know that we're excited to be in it, and uh, we'll be excited to play whoever comes out of this semi. And should it be uh, uh, Hawaii, then. That, then that's great, and it'll, it'll be great volleyball. Should it be Irvine, and they they're getting they've got some guys back healthy, it'll be great volleyball, and that's just the way the Big West is, and we got to stay focused on that. As far as the excitement level about a potential matchup, I'm sure there's lots of excitement about that. That's great, but that's not how we prep for matches. Okay. We talked about the noise and everything, but does it seem like it's been pointing for the last month or so to that this be a four-game series? Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that pointed that out. It, it potentially could be all sorts of different uh, scenarios. Uh, I told our guys early on, I thought that the, if that does end up being something like, the, um, if that does play out, um, how exciting is that? It feels like an NBA Finals. You bounce back and forth and get on a plane, travel five hours, play again. Um, there's something fun to that. You know, there's nothing about there, I, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest with you, since I've been doing this. Um, but like I said, with, with I'm not going to go too far down that path because I just have too much credit for what UC Irvine can do. And this could be a battle tonight. And it wouldn't surprise me if it, it turns into a really, really good match. And should it turn out that it's UH, then great. We'll prep for that. Um, but uh, this, is a, this is a wonderful thing that's happening in the Big West right now. This is a wonderful thing for the growth of men's volleyball. You're seeing, uh, you know, back when Santa Barbara was here against UH a couple of weeks ago, 10,000 people. You're seeing a sellout at the last couple of matches we played at the Pyramid. Um, you're seeing men's volleyball step out of the, the shadows of non-revenue type sports to big time televised, sold out, incredibly talented athletes on both sides, showcasing something that's special and probably hasn't gotten enough attention for years. Any more questions for the student athletes? If we have no more, then we will let them go back to the locker room. Thank you, gentlemen. And we'll go ahead and take any uh, additional questions for Coach Knight. Coach, how big of a difference do you think it makes for your team to kind of been through this before and the run they had last year in transforming over into this season and this setting? Well, every, without a doubt, every season has a totally different feel. And this season doesn't, it has some similarities, but it really doesn't have the same feel we didn't think it would. But there are certainly a lot of things that we can draw from from the from what we experienced last year, whether it be, you know, the road to the Final Four or the match itself, or prepping for two really um, physical teams that we played in the Final Four last year in Ohio State and UCLA, um, playing in a hostile environment, you know, playing the Bruins last year at Poly Pavilion for the Final Four. These are all wonderful things that help you grow as a team and just file things away for later use when you need them. So yeah, the, there's no doubt that there's a lot of things we learned that will help us on our journey this year. Coach, how helpful has it been to be pushed in some of those matches this year? I think you've been pushed more this year maybe even than last year, going to five with Hawaii twice last yep. week, going to five with Santa Barbara during the regular season. Just yeah. how, how helpful is that in terms of your run to uh, try to repeat here? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you're talking about similarities, there are a lot of similarities to last year in the sense that, you know, we got pushed to five with Irvine last year, and then we came over here and went five both nights against UH, and then this year we went five with, um, uh, with Santa Barbara, and then we go five with Hawaii. So there are some similarities, but the, I really think that our matches last year uh, over here really did a good job of getting us prepped for what we were going to see um, later in the season. So, uh, you know, the, the idea is you want to play good teams, you want to play good opponents. We talk to our guys all the time that when, you know, when you're away from this, after you've graduated and you're, you've moved on away from college volleyball, you don't remember the 3 0 smashings of teams. You remember the battles, you remember the big crowds, the big matches, and neutral courts and home courts on hostile environments. 
You know, nobody goes to bed at night thinking about, man, I want to be a college athlete and think of playing in a gym with 25 people and winning 3-0. You think of playing in a gym that's packed, you think of a college environment, a collegiate environment, and that's what this has been for the last couple of weeks. It's going to be like that the rest of this weekend, and it's going to be like that you know, in a couple of weeks. So what a wonderful opportunity as a student athlete to be involved totally in the collegiate environment and, and hopefully execute and do your job. Okay, we've got time for one more question. Um, Coach, if you could, um, what are the problems that uh, a Hawaii team presents uh, as opposed to the problems that UC Irvine presents? Because you'll see one to of them us, To us in general? Well, well, you know, a healthy, a healthy UCI team, um, they, have, they, they just have so much size, you know, and uh, they play a little bit different brand as far as, as far as how they stress you, the type of offense they run. And, um, they, are, they, are, they have a lot of interchangeable pieces that they're not afraid to use. So all of a sudden, you you get a good feel for one guy, and all of a sudden, they're throwing somebody else in. they got a ton of lefties on their team. Um, they, they can just give you different looks. And then when you, uh, when you think about uh, Hawaii, you know, Hawaii has been playing with the same guys. They're going to they're gonna stay pretty much true to what's got them here. Um, however, they're very confident and very physical, and you know they're they're playing at a very very high level. So, you know, one is probably a little bit more physical. One's probably a little deeper with the guys they use and pose all sorts of issues with size. Okay, thank you, Coach. Okay, thank you guys. Appreciate it.